If you don't know what this video is about, then you are lucky. Unfortunately, you need to watch and implement part one first before applying this fix. And if you implemented the code from part two, please don't try to build it. Just burn it. There will be a complete rework part soon, but for now, there will be this fix again. You know, there will definitely be problems when you code something and think it'll work without properly testing. And I guess this also means trying to build the game. <laughs> but hey, it took two weeks until someone noticed that my tutorial fix won't work. And this is why we are here. Again. To be fair, I had this part in my text where I said something like I don't know if this is a good idea to use a package from the Unity editor namespace in your game. But then I left it out in my video. Guess what? It's not. Because it doesn't exist when trying to build the game. Yeah. But I still want to use this data in a JSON file. And I really wanted to use Unity's native way of doing things. But it looks like Unity don't want us to do this. So. We are going to use our own, custom, unique identifier. There are many ways to create your own GUID, but this won't be part of this tutorial. We are going to change our code to save the tile reference by name of the building object base. This is meant as a foundation for you, and you can expand it to your needs. I talk more about this later. If you already implemented the approach from video number two, Get rid of it, remove the package, and just delete everything red. Yeah. In the tile info class, I want to keep the GUID string field. I just rename it to match the new use case better. This will save any GUID information we want for the building object base. And we can get rid of the tile base, because this is what Unity serializes into the instance ID, but we don't want it anymore. Now, at the top of the safe handler class, let's add two new dictionaries. The first one will hold a reference between a tile base and a building object base. This is for saving. The second one between a string, the GUID, and the tile base. This is for loading. We add a new method for filling these dictionaries with values and call it in the start method. I also don't know why these methods here are written in camel case. Let's make the first letter uppercase. Though we also need to update the onclick listeners for the buttons. Well, now let's fill the dictionaries. Due to our UI handling, we already have all the building object bases in the resources folder and can retrieve them with this line of code. Let's loop through them. So when we want to save a specific tile, we will use the referenced building object base for identification. This means that two buildables must never have the same tile base, or else we would get a problem with the dictionary and we would also never know which buildable had been used originally. For this I check if the dictionary does not contain the key. Then I can safely edit. Otherwise I lock an error telling me that there is something odd. When adding to the first dictionary, let's also add to the second one. The key is the GUID. Now, like I said in the beginning, I keep the symbol. I use the name of the building object base. This is the name of the file itself and the default Unity field. Of course, you can also add a new field here and use this as unique identifier, as long as it's a string. Well, you could also use other primitives. So let's fix the first word error in the code. When saving, we need to change the way we instantiate the tile info. We only need a position and a GUID. No tile base anymore. And we create a GUID by looking into the dictionary for the matching buildable to the given tile base we have. Then we use the name. Theoretically, you could also only save the string GUID instead of the whole buildable in the first dictionary. To prevent errors, let's also check that the key exists in the dictionary. Otherwise, Unity would crash here. That's it for saving. But for testing this, 
we need to remove the remaining arrows first. Let's just comment this loading part out for now. Back in Unity, I need to update the button references, because I renamed the methods for saving and loading. When I now start the game, I get an error telling me that I have a duplicate tile base, huh? Oh, well, yeah. Looks like my gold wall is made out of wood. Let's fix this like it should be. Uh, but you can see it, the code works. At least the lock was useful. Now, when starting again, no errors and I can draw. Let's do this and save it. I will open the save JSON file. No instance ID anymore, only the name of the according building object base. With this information, we could now retrieve the buildable and the tilebase in there. But we already made the dictionary for exactly this, so it's quite easy. So on loading, for every tile info we load, we will check if the GUID dictionary contains the key. If yes, we can just set the tile with the value for this key from our dictionary. Otherwise I add a log to inform about this and this position then gets ignored. Error tolerance or whatever. So let's test this with the existing chase. And yes, everything gets loaded as expected. So for testing, let me change some of the gray walls to a non-existing name. When I now try to load this, you can see there are some logs about this and this part of the saved data is missing. As long as you don't rename your scriptable objects, or better, the extra GUID field I recommend you to create, everything should load. And this time you can even build your project. Over and out. No more unplanned episodes of this. Don't tell me if there are errors. Thank you for watching and also thank you to everyone supporting me and the channel. Special thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Patrick, Nex Womo, and Persian Librarian. Thank you all. And as usual, if you enjoy the content, consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time.